Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you so much for joining me for today's webinar. Today we'll be discussing task and activity management inside of Nimble. My name is Michaela Underdahl and I'm Nimble's community manager. So before we get started, I would like to do a quick around two minute overview about what Nimble is because based on the poll, we have around 30% of you that are not familiar with Nimble yet or not Nimble users yet. So I want to explain. So Nimble is an easy to use uh, customer relationship management tool that works for you in Office 365, G Suite, and also everywhere else you work. And what do we mean by that is that we realize that most of us are doing our work in our inbox or we're prospecting or researching on social media or websites and we just don't do most of our work inside of our CRM. So that's why we developed extensions that will help you use Nimble outside of Nimble. So no matter if you are on Office 365, G Suite or Outlook or regular Gmail, you will be able to uh, install our plugins into your inbox and you will be able to access your existing records, edit them, create tasks, activities, log any notes, create deals, and so on. And you will also be able to create new contact records. And when you sign up for Nimble, you'll have to actually set it up in the main application. And once you connect your email, calendars, and import contacts, we will unify everything into one easy to use platform. So then when you locate a contact record inside of Nimble, you will be easily able to see everything that has been done with the individual and everything that needs to happen and who is responsible for doing that. So we'll actually be focusing on just that during today's webinar, how you can create it, how you can make sure that it's assigned to the right people, keep an eye on the assignments, ping people if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and also how you can review what has already been done. Nimble also integrates with social media. So I mentioned that we have the browser extension that will that will plug into your Outlook or Gmail, but we also have a browser extension that you can use in your browser. So when you're anywhere on the web, on social media, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, you can use that to just hover over any hyperlink name and Nimble will show you an existing record and allow you to do all the things that I described, or it will help you to create new contact records and you can also use that or any, on any website. So if you're prospecting, you can just highlight a name and Nimble will help you create new contact records. Nimble also integrates with a company called PySync that allows our users to integrate Nimble with almost 200 different software as a service applications. So if you're using QuickBooks Online, if you're using Xero or MailChimp or anything else, you will have the option to sync Nimble with these applications and keep the contacts in bi-directional things. So Pysync will give all our users 14 days for free. And during this trial, you can import as many contacts as you want. So it can actually just help you to tr transition to Nimble from a different CRM or to just get started when you're figuring out all the different places from which you need to import your contacts into Nimble. And then you can basically let the trial expire and just use it as a transition tool instead of importing contacts using CSV files. If you want to actually use it to keep different applications in sync, then Pysync gives you 2,000 contact limits. So it's 2,000 contacts per user per month. And after that, there's a charge associated with that. You can also go on Pysync's pricing site, put the estimate of the contacts that you would be syncing, and they would give you the estimate for what the price would be for the integration. And our next training webinars, we're doing one tomorrow, and it will be focused on prospecting and outreaching in the right way during COVID-19 crisis. So we will focus on how to use Nimble for prospecting, how to create outreaches using our segmentation and group messaging features, and it will also be hosted by our founder and CEO, John Ferrara. So if you're on our email list, we'll be sending you invite and we'll also be sharing a link to this recording in the, in the, in the chat box in the GoToMeeting. Next week, I'll be doing the general Nimble overview and mobile overview. And let's go into Nimble now. 
So here we are. And as I said, today we will be focusing on task and activity management. So I will skip most of um, the setup. So I'm just going to assume that everybody's already set up. For those of you that are new and need help with setting up, please, please email us at care at nimble.com and we have our customer support people that will be more than happy to set you up. So I still want to start in settings. Every time you wanna to go to settings, you can click on the circle in the top right corner Click on settings. And in our case, we first want to take a look at notifications because that's a big part of task and activity management. If you assign something to yourself or somebody on your team, it's very likely that you might need a notification to be reminded of actually getting it done. So in notifications and settings in Nimble, this is where you can decide how you want to be notified. So we give you the option to be notified by email. We can also deploy a pop-up window notification, or it can also be a browser desktop notification. If you're first getting started, I would maybe recommend starting small and or create enabling notifications in one place and seeing if it works for you. Because if you just enable all of them in all these different places, it might actually become a lot. And then we, we've we heard from users that they just disable all of them and then they are not really getting reminded about anything. So um, just review what will probably make the most sense or you probably already, you probably already know what places you actually like getting notified. So I personally don't really like the browser and desktop notifications. And the main reason in my case is that I do a lot of demos, I do a lot of webinars and I share my screen. So I need to keep them disabled most of the time anyways. But if that's something that you enjoy popping up on your screen as you're as you're working, you can you can um, you can always just click on it and be taken into Nimble to review what the notification is all about. It can actually be a lot of help. So these are notifications. Since we are in settings, I also wanted to cover how you can create custom activities. So this is something that only the account administrator will be allowed to do. And custom activities can be really useful if you need any different type of activity on top of what we already have in Nimble. So we have calls, calendar events, so any meetings, anything that appears on your calendar, and we have tasks. So in my case, I also created an in-person meeting notification that's not super applicable <laughs> during these times, but I hope it will be again soon. So that's one custom activity I created. I also have one for LinkedIn message because Nimble currently doesn't have a direct integration with Nimble. You can still use the browser extension to access existing records while on LinkedIn and create new ones when you're on LinkedIn, but we do not have a direct integration in the sense that would allow me to see what I talk to somebody about using LinkedIn message. So I won't see the history of communications inside of Nimble. I can only see that um, on email. So I created one for LinkedIn message. You can also create custom activity for a specific conference. Maybe it's a conference you go to every year. So you can create that. If you need to create a new activity, you just click here, create custom activity, you name it. So another type could be a product demo. You can select the icon too. So let's do this one. And there's one important th thing to pay attention to. So Nimble has a feature that is called last contacted date. This is a really useful feature because it you will then be able to segment on it. So if you want to pull up a list of people that you didn't contact in the past 90 days, we will be automatically updating the last contacted every time you email the person or they email you every time you interact on Twitter, and it can also be reset by you setting up activities. So for the for the custom activities, the only time you can decide if you actually want the custom activity to reset the last contacted date 
you you will have to set it up when you're creating the activity you can edit it later so that's something to keep in mind i definitely want all my custom activities to reset the last contacted so then you just click create and you can create as many as you want so you can always update the icons but you will not be able to change the option to update the last contacted And our today page is meant to really help you to figure out what is it on your to-do list for the day? What are the most important things you need to get done? So since we're talking about tasks and activities today, one of the boxes or one of the widgets that we have on the today page are tasks. So you can easily see all your upcoming tasks. You can also see those that are overdue, those that have been completed, those that you marked as important, that means, let's see, you would just click on this little star. So now, yep, now it's popping up here. And you can also see those that you delegated to somebody else on your team. So I can keep an eye on what's on my to-do list and also what's on my team's to-do list. You can also see the overdue ones. It's easy to pop it open and you can also write a comment. So if this is overdue, you have the option to write a comment and the person that is responsible for this task will get a notification that you commented on it and that will remind them to actually <laughs> um, get it done. So you could write a comment here and ping the person who's responsible for it. Just let them know, hey, this is due today. Please make sure that you you'll definitely follow up with this person. You can also create tasks from here. You could name, you could type in the name of the task, little task description. If there's something you just want to log, you also have the option to mark it as complete, but usually when we're creating tasks, we're creating those that are supposed to happen in the future, but we still give you the option to mark something that already happened. And the reason would be, that you, it's very beneficial to really have all the information related to all your prospects and customers in one place. So every single thing that has been done with these people should be recorded so you and everybody else on your team can easily find it and see, have like a nice view into the entire relationship with the person. You can also set the due date. We give you the option to do today, tomorrow, this week, next week later and also set a specific date and time. So that's probably the most useful option here. You can also select the time here. You can assign it to yourself or anybody on your team. And these people have to be individual Nimble users. You can also relate it to contacts. These can be internal or external but they have to have a contact record inside of Nimble. They de don't have to be Nimble users. You don't have to pay for a license for them, but they have to have an existing contact record in Nimble. You can also relate it to multiple. And if there's a deal associated with this task, you can also find the deal and you can also apply tags to tasks. So, that's really useful when you have different projects that you are working on. If some tasks are related to the sales part of your job, some of them are related to maybe uh, marketing, you can create tags and then organize the task with these tags. And then Nimble gives you the option to pull up the individual tags and see all the tasks that you need to, you need to focus on. It's also useful when you're using it to manage certain projects so it could be real uh, it could be related to a uh, webinar planning or a certain campaign so that's what the tags related to custom activities could be used for these are completely separate from the contact tag so if you're already using tags to organize your contacts just keep in mind that these are separate these are really only related to tasks 
Another place where you can create tasks is the Nimble contact record. So as you can see on the individual contact record, we give you the option to add notes. Notes are newly searchable. So you can search for keywords here. If you want to log any activity that happened in the past, you would click on log activity, select the type of the activity, including custom ones. And as you can see, the mark as completed is already checked. And that's because log activity is anything is for anything that already happened in the past. If you want to schedule anything new, looks exactly the same. The only difference is that mark is completed is not checked. So you select if you want it to be a task or if you want to put it on your calendar. In that case, you, you'll have the option to select from any of the calendars that you connected to Nimble. It could be a call or any custom activity. And on the right side, under interactions, we'll always show you the entire history of communications and everything that has been done with this person. And since we're talking just about activities, we also have a tab specific for activities, so you can go there and also a drop down menu in which you can quickly focus on just the just the activity that you are interested in, or you can just pick all of them. You can easily expand. You can mark them as important or unmark them. You can mark it as completed. You can make any changes to it, or you can quickly complete and create new one, or you can even delete it straight from here. And as I mentioned earlier, you also have the option to write a comment. So if you're reviewing somebody's contact record, you see an overdue activity or a call that somebody on your team was supposed to uh, get done, you can kind of ping them in the comment here. And as it happens, depending on the type of notifications you have enabled, you will always have notifications in the application as well. So it will be under this bell in the top right corner. As you can see, I have a little red dot signaling that I do have a notification here. So I can see that people are interacting with my messages. And I also see that Megan commented on a task that I created for her. So I can quickly click on it, preview the task, and also see that she's aware of it and she'll get it done. And here we are in activity. So under activities tab inside of Nimble, let's start on agenda first. This is where you can review everything that is on your to-do list in more detail. On the left side in the filters, you can tell Nimble if you just want to focus on tasks or if you also want to see all your calls, all your events and all custom activities. And this really depends on why you're creating this, why you're using uh, the feature right now. So if you just want to see what's on your to-do list for the next week, if you want to see every single thing you're supposed to get done, everything that you're responsible for, you can just keep all these filters checked. But if you just want to go through your tasks, you can deselect the other options. You can also make sure that you are only focusing on those assigned to you. If you want to see what tasks are any of your colleagues responsible for, you can select them from here. And as you, as you now know, you can also organize tasks by tags. So I created ones for sales-related activities and also webinar-related activities. So I want to see all the tasks that I'm responsible for that I tagged with the tag sales. So if sales is one of the most important things that I'm responsible for in my role, that's definitely the tag that I will always go through first. Once I finish these activities, I can move over to the next one. So this is a great way to organize your activities and make sure that you can always quickly pull up those that are the most important ones, most pressing ones, and those that you need to take care of right away. From here, you can do 
all the same things we already covered. You can review the task, make any edits, complete, and also create new ones. You can delete it. You can review the tags. You can write a comment on it. You can also resolve them. And you can also create new activities from here, also from here. And you can also tell Nimble what time frame you are interested in looking at. So in this case, we're just reviewing the current week. In activities listing, you will be able to create to-do lists and also create reports. So as you can see on the left side here, you can quickly select everybody on your team, select the activities you want to focus on. So I'm just going to keep all of them. I can play with the time frame here. So I'm just going to focus on any activities from April 1st uh, ongoing. I can also configure the table here. So this depends on why I'm creating this report. So if I have all these filters enabled, then maybe I want to have as many columns here as possible. If I want to focus on just calls that one of the team members performed, maybe I would want to configure the table differently. Maybe I would want to definitely see the phone number, the status, and also the duration of the call. So I can kind of see how much time they say that they are spending on the phone. So you can click on configure table. As you can see, you can pin some of the columns. So I pin the activity name, phone, status, and duration. If any of these are also important for you, like location, you can easily pin it as well. You can also drag and drop. Want to see the related deals as well. Actually want to have it much closer. If you want to unpin them, you just click here and if you want the duration above, you can also drag and drop drag and drop here. Once you save the table here, you also have the option to save the filters. So I previously saved it as Michaela's calls. And this will help me to easily pull it up in the future with the correct configuration of the table so I don't have to spend time moving the columns around. You can also export it. Once you export it, Nimble will ask you what dates you want to export and if you want to do all filters, just filtered activities or all activities. Once you hit the export button, you'll have to keep in our inbox for Nimble to let you know that the export is ready and we'll send you a link on which you'll be able to download the exported file. You can also make any edits here. You can expand the task. You can mark it as important. You can change the name. So in regards to the names of the activities, I would recommend always adding the name because as you can see, when you have a list of all your activities and if you just call them follow up, follow up, you'll just have 100 notifications about following up. So it makes it a little easier when you have the name of the person who you are supposed to follow up with. You can also change the status here. And you can also reassign them here. I also give you the little preview into the description and you can also change the description in here as well. So these are all the different places where you can manage activities inside of the application. Like I mentioned, we also have the extensions into 
Gmail and Outlook. So we're going to take a look how you can manage your activities in there. So here I am in my Gmail inbox. You can download the Nimble browser plugin on your Chrome if you're using Chrome. And then if you're using Gmail, it will automatically plug into your Gmail. If you don't want to use it, we also give you the option to close it so it's not blocking your screen. And if you want to have it, if you want to open it again, you can just click on the logo here. And on the right side, we will always be showing you existing records for all the people that you are emailing with. So it's already suggested my personal record. So in this case, I'll be able to make any edits to it. So I can click edit, make any changes to the contact record. And most importantly, I can add notes. I can do that from inside of my inbox without having to leave the place where I'm working. I can also log any past activities, schedule new ones, and I could also create a deal from here. The same goes for Outlook. So here I am in Outlook in the web version. So it looks a little different on desktop and on web. So on the web version, when you install the add-in to Outlook, you'll have to click on the three dots here, scroll down, click on Nimble, and Nimble will pull up the contact record. So the designs, we're currently working on unifying the designs. So um, we still have the older one on Outlook because we're in the process of um, redesigning it right now. So you will be able to click on the plus sign button here and create a note, task. It can be an event, call, deal. And you can also edit the contact record. Here we are in the desktop version for Outlook for Mac. So it might look a little different on your end, but it should do the same thing. So on the version for desktop, you can click on the Nimble, Nimble logo here. And if the contact record is already in your Nimble database, we will show it to you. And it looks exactly the same as I just previewed that it looks on, on the web version for Outlook. So it's very easy to look any activities assign it to any of your team members straight from the place where you're working. So this is our inbox. This is where most of us probably spend most of our time. But the rest of the time, we might be talking to people on social media. We might be prospecting on different websites. So I can also show you how you can use the activities outside of your face, uh, outside of your inbox and outside of the Nimble application. So. If I'm on LinkedIn, if I just connected with somebody, I want to make sure that my uh, team members will help me to do the next steps. I can quickly click on the logo here. And let's see if I have Scott in our database. So I can also go onto the person's contact record and highlight the name if the name is not hyperlinked. And then Nimble will help me create the live profile for the person. So I can actually just use it to do a little prospecting. So Nimble's already looking for other places where the person is active on social media. It will help me enrich the profile. If I decide that I want to add the person to Nimble, I can click Add to Nimble. And without any data entry, I have this beautiful contact record then, and Nimble then allows me to create a node. So I can put a node straight from LinkedIn. I can also look past activities and schedule new ones. So I could create task here. Set up the due date. And I can assign it to Megan. 
I can also mark the contact as important and also set up a stay in touch reminder here. So this is how you can use the activities on the extension. And since this is such a useful feature, I want to spend a few more minutes talking about all the other things that you can do with this extension that is not exactly related just to activities and tasks that we're talking about on today's webinar. But I want to make sure that everybody is aware of the fact that we're putting as many features that we have on the main application onto this extension to give you the option to use Nimble from the place where you're used to working the most. So I just showed you how you can easily create new contact record. You can also hover over an existing record and Nimble will show you the existing one. So let's see if I have a list here. I do, and I actually have duplicates. So this is another feature I wanted to mention. This extension will actually help you to check for duplicates. So I can check all the duplicate contact records, click on the merge button here. I can select the primary one and Nimble will clean it up for me. Now I have only one contact record for a list, so I can open it up. I can scroll down to view the history of our communications. I can also see her experience, her bio, what she's influential in, and I can also qualify her from here. I could create new tag or pick from existing ones. And I could also use our enrichment credits to find her contact information. As I mentioned, we can mark the person as important and set up a stay in touch reminder as well. From the drop down menu here, you can review the entire history of interactions with the person. You can focus on tasks, activities, including any custom activities. You can review any custom data fields. Preview information about the person's company. You can look at her so social profiles, social signals, preview the bio. You can also attach files from OneDrive, Google Drive, and Dropbox. And the last place that I want to show you how you can use tasks and activities in Nimble is the mobile application. So here we are. In the mobile app and i'm previewing this on iphone we also have it available for android and the features are almost identical so one of the main tabs on the mobile application are tasks so we can easily see the upcoming ones or you can go to the completed ones those that you have starred or marked as important you can also preview those that you previously delegated. You can expand them, mark them as complete, or complete them and then create new ones. You can mark them as important. You can preview the contact that the task is related to. So you can find a little more about the person that the task is related to, you can also edit it and delete it straight from the mobile application. When you go onto an individual contact record, you can also see all the tasks related to the contact record from here. So it will be under pending. So here's the task I created for Megan. I could mark it as complete. And in tasks, you can also create new ones by clicking on the plus sign button in the top right corner. So you can set up the task title, the description, of course, the due date. You 
can assign it to you yourself or somebody else on your team add the related contacts and again these can be internal and external but the people have to be inside of nimble so they don't have to be users but they have to have an existing contact record if you want to relate it to an existing deal you can do so as well and you can provide tags to the task as, as well so that is everything that i prepared for you in regards to task and activity management and i would like to present the offer we have prepared so for everybody that is new to nimble we will give you 30 days of nimble for free you can just go to nimble.com offer slash webinar 30 if you're already in trial we will be more than happy to extend the trial for you so just email us at care at nimble.com and we'll be we'll be more than happy to extend it for you and we also created an onboarding checklist so you can download it on this link uh, megan will be sharing the links with you and we will also share all these links and information with you in our follow-up email and I have a lot of questions here, so let's go through them now. Jamie, is there a true integration with Facebook and LinkedIn like you have with Twitter? Great question, Jamie. In about 2015, I believe, uh, I believe LinkedIn was first who uh, decided to get rid of the their access to APIs and then Facebook follow shortly after. So as of current moment, we do not have a direct integration, but you can use, you can still use Nimble Prospector, our browser plugin that will allow you to do what I was previewing on LinkedIn. So you can just hover over any hyperlink names or highlight any name anywhere on the internet. And then we'll help you create new contact records, log the information, and also will surface existing contact records if you already have them in Nimble. So we only have a true direct integration with Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn as of now, don't want to play. <laughs> Paul, I wanted to see how I can connect my Instagram account to Nimble. So that's actually related to the question that Jamie asked. Face, uh, Instagram is owned by Facebook, so we are limited by what we can actually do to them, what they allow us to do. So at this current moment, you cannot connect your Instagram account to Nimble, but you can still use the browser plugin on Instagram. Uh, Christina, how do you use Instagram and Nimble together? You mentioned it, but I'm not sure I understand how to browse Instagram and import into Nimble. So you would have to use it on the web. You would have to log into your Instagram account on the web, have the browser extension plugged in, and the browser extension works on Chrome, Firefox and Microsoft Edge, and we're fixing it for Safari. So it will be uh, again available soon. And then you'll be able to hover over any names anywhere in comments, in your feed, and then create new contact records and also use it to update existing contact records. Uh, Michael is asking, why is the icon important? And I believe you're referring to the icon um, in the uh, custom activities it is not important <laughs> it is just something that can maybe help you uh, differentiate the different custom activities it's mostly like a fun little feature so it it's not i wouldn't call it important it's just an option we give you to set an icon to it so if you only have three activities and you memorize the icons and then when you're previewing a list of the activities you can also just ju judge by the icon. So if you have a lot of these little guys above each other, you know that that day you'll, you're, you're scheduled for a lot of in-person meetings or actually LinkedIn messages in this case. Ted is asking, can you link your Nimble tasks to Google Tasks? Uh, not at this moment, Ted. Rob, uh, it would be nice if Nimble offered a printable task view. So in activities, you can you can pick just your tasks. You can set up the time frame, and then you can export it. So once you have the exported file, you'll be able to print it. Patrick, can you integrate synchronized to your Google Tasks on G Suite? I think at this current moment, you are only able to synchronize contacts with um, 
with G Suite and Nimble, and you would be able to do that um, via integration with Pysync, but no tasks. I believe that that's something that Pysync is working on. So it might be worth checking with their support team if they could give you an ETA. Because when I talked to them a few months ago, they told me that there was something that they were exploring. Ted is asking, does Nimble work with clear, uh, clear slide? I am not familiar with this app, but when you go under contacts and search for service name, you can always type the name of it in there and it looks like we do not integrate with them but i would uh also try googling nimble clear site and zapier if maybe zapier provides some zap as they call it or integration with us but we do not integrate with them directly uh paul is saying outlook extension doesn't show me email messages paul uh please first check that the correct email is connected to Nimble. So that's the first thing to check when you go to networks and imports. So under email accounts, just make sure that you connected the correct one. And then the next thing that is important to check is that the uh, contact record actually has the email address. If everything looks good if the correct outlook is connected to nimble if the contact record has the correct email and the messages are not syncing please email us at care nimble.com and we will take a look at that gabriel coming from the infusions of world automations highly interests me if you are using pricing to integrate mailchimp can you can automations be initiated from updating a tag in nimble after they sync yes that can be done with uh with pricing for sure if so with which frequency do they sync please i'm new to mailchimp so i will need to research their site and capabilities i'm just assuming that they have simple automations possible yes setting up the pricing integrations is very easy it works on rules so if this then that so as you mentioned if you set it up that you want um contact record to be created if um, if a tag is updated or created, you can set it up that way. And how often? I actually am not sure. You can, um, I'm just thinking what the fastest way would be. I'm not 100% sure that our team knows it, but try reaching out to care at nimble.com. And uh, if they don't know that, they will reach out to the Pysing team to ask them about it. Or, of course, you can also. Um, ask pricing directly but our team is very helpful so i'm sure they'll be more than happy to find that information for you so care at nimble.com please lee i like how nimble integrates with linkedin is there a way to see nimble if contacts are opening mailchimp emails um i would look into the integration with nimble mailchimp and um um and Pysync, so that would be on Pysync side. Pysync has been creating a lot of blog posts and videos, so I'm sure you would be able to find it there. Or you can, again, reach out to care at nimble.com and our team will be able to find that information for you. Uh, Richard, can you show where the Gmail extension can be added? I don't see it in the add-on section. So you actually first will have to go to your Chrome store for the browser extensions, type in Nimble, install it on, on your Chrome, and then it will automatically plug into your Gmail. If you need help with that, our team will be more than happy to walk you through it. So you can email us at care at nimble.com. Frankly, Franklin is asking, is it overkill to use Nimble in concert with a marketing automation CRM like Exif campaign? No, great question. So, you might be aware about our group messaging feature in Nimble, but the group messaging feature is actually not designed to replace your marketing automation system. We have limits on how many messages you can send to people, and the reason is simple. The messages are being sent from your email provider. They're being sent from your Gmail or your Outlook or a different type of email you might have, so they are not being sent from 
a different tool. So we set the limits to prevent you getting shut down as a spammer. So we found out that the a limit that is absolutely safe is 300 per user per day. So the regular, uh, the base number that you'll see of how many group messages you can send will be 100 per day per user. You can also purchase upgrades. Every 100 additional 100 messages will be for additional $10 per month per user. Um, so if you if you still need a manage, management tool to manage your email list, if you still want to send newsletters, then basically it's the only way to use it in concert as you said with nimble and you can also integrate constant contact or mail mailchimp with nimble uh via pricing so i hope it uh answered your question the group messaging in nimble was designed to use in conjunction with our segmentation so you can really segment your database into targeted groups of people and then really really focus on what do you want to say in the individual messages and send it only to those targeted groups of people as opposed to marketing automation tool can be used to basically blast your email list, send out newsletters and so on so the group messaging in nimble is more for one-on-one -on -one communication in scale <laughs> because nobody on the list of the recipients will know that you sent it from that you sent it using the group messaging they will not know that there are other people receiving the same message to them it will look like you send them a one-on-one -on -one message from outlook or gmail stacy when you set up custom fields are those fields set up on other teams nimble platform um they will be visible for everybody on your team so you'll be creating it for You'll be creating it for your Nimble account. And everybody that is on your team, every single team member that has been invited to your organization's Nimble account will see the custom fields in their uh, in their Nimble. Osvaldo, is there an overview about the activity done per member? Um, if you can send us a little more information about what you're looking for specifically at care at nimble.com we'll be more than happy to send you any resources we have cindy do outlook tasks sync uh not at this moment cindy john in activities you create an activity and you didn't check update can you delete it and re-enter to add the update last contact date um yes so i believe you're you're um asking about setting up the custom activities and when you create new ones let's say you forgot to check that every time you schedule this custom activity you wanted to update the last contact date. so you can of course delete it and then create it again uh cindy's uh Oh, Stacy has one more question. Uh, can you import leads into Nimble? Yes, Stacy, you can do that uh, using uh, CSV import. So you can go to networks and imports, go to contacts, click on CSV, and you can upload a CSV. And then it depends how you want to mark the leads. If you want to upload a tag, you can do that up on the import. Um, when you review a contact record in Nimble, you also see these lead fields. So if you want to mark that the um, that it's a, it's actually a lead, not a customer, you can do so here. And if you want to import a bunch of leads into Nimble at once, you can do so using the CSV import. Just make sure that the column to which you want to put the lead information will be called the same way as the field in Nimble. So if you want to put it here, the column in your spreadsheet would be called lead status. And to all the leads, you would just fill all the different um, fields in the CSV file as leads. And Nimble will import this information into all the contact records in bulk. Cindy's asking, when will Safari extension be done? I would hope it will be done uh, this summer, but please, 
please email us at care at nimble.com because we do not have an ETA at this moment, but it's something that uh, the team is working on. So I don't see any more questions. If you end up having more questions, like I said multiple times, we are available at care at nimble.com. This is the special offer for our new users. So you can sign up to get 30 days of Nimble for free. If you want to download the onboarding checklist, you can do so on this link. And again, we will send a follow-up email to everybody with the link to today's recording and also with all these links and resources. And if you want to see how you can prospect and outreach better in the current times, um, you can also attend our webinar tomorrow. We'll be doing with our CEO, John Ferrara, and we'll, we'll really be diving into how you can use Nimble for prospecting, finding new people, bringing them into Nimble, organizing them into lists, and then using our segmentation to create targeted groups that you want to outreach to. We'll also cover how you can uh, use the group messaging features and any details about it and how you can use Nimble's email tracking to track how people are interacting with your messages and use tasks and activities to follow up with these people. And next week I'll be doing a general Nimble overview and a mobile overview. So if you want to sign up, please go on nimble.com slash company slash webinars and you can pick the one that you're interested in. So thank you so much for your attention and joining me today and I hope that you will have a wonderful rest of your day.